wrong. And we, we're waiting for him to get it right. Always my fault. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I don't. I don't <laughs> apportion blame at all. Not unless, not unless it's somebody else's fault. Right. <laughs> I've got a thumbs up from Martina. Excellent. Yep. That's good. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another live at the Hive. Uh, sorry about the late start. We've had some connection issues uh, down uh, down south. Uh, I've got a torrential rainstorm and thunderstorm up here in Yorkshire. Uh, so between us, it's been a bit of a, uh, a glitchy start. But we're here now. Uh, Roger seems to have the good weather that I've just had uh, down where he is. Uh, but he is live at the Hive side. Uh, good afternoon, Roger. Good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon, everyone. It, um, it really shows that this is a, a, a genuine live, um, uh, a live transmission. Uh, yeah, the sun is, uh, it comes out and then it goes back in again. We've had um, showers uh, much of the day, really. Um, we're hoping that everything's going to be okay. Um, because this is live at a hive, um, certain things are going to happen or may not happen that um, people will sort of meet at the bottom of their gardens, really. Uh, nothing has been set up for specifically for the uh, filming. And it's a case of what we're going to see. <laughs> now, a little bit of history. Uh, this is in the bottom of Martina's uh, garden. Uh, you can see there are five hives here at fairly um, uh, close, um, uh, close together. Uh, she's got neighbours basically all round. Um, and from a beekeeper's point of view, and no disrespect to uh, Martina, but um, in, uh, let's say, British beekeeping terms, uh, she is a beginner. Um, she comes from Czech Republic, where her grandpa, who's uh, uh, 90 years old, uh, has been a beekeeper, um, I think, all of his life, but I'm not too sure. Martina helped him, um, but... As far as British beekeepers is concerned, she's only been involved, I suppose, for about three years, but she's our, our secretary at Whisper, Whisper Green. Um, but what she's got here is fairly typical of what a lot of uh, beekeepers have got, uh, especially beginners, uh, beginner ones. Now, the, um, um, the neighbours around... Um, She's obviously a little bit uh, bit concerned about. Now, she's got a uh, an out apiary, which I've checked on uh, Google Maps uh, today, is almost spot on uh, two miles away. And that's where she's got um, her main hives. And she's trying to build up a, a, a little bit. Um, and what, what she does is tend to bring the, um, the nukes from the out apiary to here so that she hasn't got any large uh, colonies. So what we've got here are fairly small colonies. So please, please, please don't um, uh, don't criticise Martina for having that. It's just uh, uh, just circumstances. Now we've got one or two, I think, quite interesting things to show you. When Martina was away, I looked at her bees uh, just once, which was a week ago last Thursday. So what, nine, ten? Mm. Uh, 10 or 11 days uh, uh, days ago I had to take a bit of remedial action and I haven't um, inspected the colonies uh, since uh, we've got two small colonies here that I understand were made from this one here and the only reason they were made was because this Martina considered to be a nice colony that was putting up queen cells and she wanted to get two queens mated in those nukes. So that's why they are uh, quite uh, quite small. We will have a look at those, um, hopefully, if we've got enough time. Uh, this colony here um, prepared to swarm. Martina considered that it was not a particularly uh, pleasant colony to handle. So what she wanted to do was to uh, take the queen away and then uh, requeen it. Uh, circumstances have um, uh, come in the way, really, and um, we haven't been able to do that. Now, a week ago last Thursday, I cut out some uh, all the emergency cells, but there was one there that was unsealed. Now, I think, as I mentioned on the last 
uh, live streaming. Um, it was still unsealed, I think, about 10 or 11 days after the Queen was taken away, which really shouldn't happen if you if, if you work the life cycles out. <laughs> but it did, and it's one of the things that are happening more and more in um, in what I call modern beekeeping. Certainly these things have happened, started happening since the turn of the uh, 20th century. Anyway, right. Um, we were hoping last Thursday... So seven days uh, after I came uh, to take that queen cell out and um, put another one in. But of course, it, it rained. So now four days later, I expect that that queen cell will probably emerge. So we'll go in and we'll check it and we'll see what, uh, what we've got. Uh, we may find uh, a virgin queen and we may find a, uh, a, a dud queen cell. I really don't know. Um, and neither does Martina, but that's all part of beekeeping, and um, it's it's how we get out of the problems that we have that um, that, that make beekeepers. For those who are interested, um, before I came here, I. Um, I looked at my own bees and I came across a young queen, young virgin queen with a deformed wing. And um, uh, afterwards, we'll, uh, we'll show, you, show you that as well. So, a bit of smoke in the entrance. That's a good sign because I've just seen pollen uh, go in. So, I'm going to have to put the... Uh, supers down there so we are we need to glue them here put the high tool straight in i've told you about these things uh really good in my opinion because it means that you can Um, put the wedge in and just uh, smoke them and um, uh, hold the two up. That's actually quite heavy. Now I'll try and talk through what we're what we're doing. When I came a week ago last Thursday, um, there was very definitely a nectar dearth. <laughs> but um, this last Thursday, I took a walk in this area we walked uh, just over about nine and a half miles and there were a lot of um uh a lot of limes out and they were absolutely humming with bees now this colony is actually quite small it's only got bees on those uh, frames there but from memory they are quite well covered with um uh with bees And um, um, when I was here last time, um, they I thought they were actually quite 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 pleasant to handle. Now I'll give you a little bit of an idea of um, technique if you've got these uh, what are called plastic uh, plastic ends. They used to they used to be made out of metal, and of course they were called metal ends in those days. Um, but a little bit of bit of technique if you want to take let's say one of these frames out. Uh, just lift one of them up, bring it back towards you. I know this has got foundation in. I could actually pull it, uh, pull it uh, straight out, and then slide the other one underneath, like so. And then you can take all the other frames out. And you haven't got to take the take the frame out of the box. So. They seem to be behaving quite well, and they, they're telling me that they've got something that, um, that they think's um, likely to be a queen or end up being a queen if they, if they develop. Oh, 
right now. I'm, I'm definitely not being critical um, because I, I, I think Martina has actually bought some of these boxes whole. But you see there's a gap down through there, which does happen because, of course, wood warps. Um, if you make the box, then drive a couple of nails through that way, preferably at an angle so it, it, it pulls the end, end rail in. Now, these are behaving themselves pretty well. Um, and you see that's, um, that's quite well covered with bees. Right, so what I'll try and do is try and find the queen cell that I left. I didn't put a drawing pin in because I tend not to carry them in my pocket. See that's that's that is that is fairly well covered. There's no brood on there, so the queen is probably taken away around um, uh, 21 or more days ago. There's one one there just um, uh, hasn't hasn't emerged yet. We have whoops. I'm, I'm actually looking for a virgin queen as I go because I think we're going to find one. And I know for some of you folk watching know that I'm quite good at losing queens. I won't shake the um, bees off the frame. I'll just give a little bit of smoke to see if I can find where the um, where the queen cell was. It obviously, wasn't on that side. So we've got a few uh, unemerged worker cells there. And that one is alive, so the queen was probably taken away around about 21 days ago. Now, once a queen cell emerges, um, you can't say how long it's going to take the bees to um, to um, chew the cell away, because they do vary quite a bit. Some of them do them ever so quick, and others a week later, and you've still got evidence of a... Of, um, uh, a recently emerged uh, queen cell. So this one here, um, I can't find the queen cell at all. So these have removed the cell quite quickly. But what I will do is I will have a look through these combs now to see if I can spot the virgin queen. Because um, as I'm sure you've um, read some of my writings, um, these days, it's surprising the number of times you can get a queen emerge with um, uh, with deformed wings. <laughs> and the um, problem is, if you do what you're t we're usually told, which is leave it um, for two weeks or whatever, um, if the queen can't fly, uh, she ends up down on the ground there and, um, of course, never gets off the ground. And it's the poor old swallows that get the blame for the um, uh, the queen not coming back. And it's not them because the poor queen just didn't get off the ground. So what I'd like to do, if possible, is to check to see that the um, uh, the Virgin Queen's got all her wings. And as I've already said, I've got one in a cage there that came from out of one of my hives or oh, less than an hour and a half ago. That is um, has got a deformed wing. And in fact, what we're going to do afterwards is um, is make a little video of it, well, hopefully. Um, right, virgin queens aren't always easy to uh, to spot. Um, they can behave quite differently. Some of them can be absolutely still on the comb. Others flitting over the tops of the uh, worker bees. Uh, some just go and hide. Um, not just uh, in another part of the hive where you wouldn't expect to see them, but also underneath the 
uh, the workers as well. <coughs> now, you may well hear from some sources that um, um, newly emerged Virgin Queens can't fly. Don't believe it, whatever you do, because I've seen them fly on several occasions. Um, in fact, on on some occasions, I've had them emerge straight from cells and fly. Now, this was, according to Martina, quite a touchy colony. Um, but I see nothing wrong with it um, now. Um, if Martina says it was uh, touchy, then... Um, I think it reasonable to assume it was. Now here's one bee here with see that one there? Hang on, I'll better get my better get my pointer out. Yeah, that one there. That's all shiny. That's probably got chronic bee paralysis virus. What did it stick on me? My pointer. Oh, oh it's gone. No. Oh. Okay, that's an opportunity gone. We did see um, it, Roger. We could see it. Sorry, you did see it. Uh, it didn't yeah. focus on the high tool, then, did it? You, no, you it was know okay. High we could see how it's shiny. Yeah, yeah. You know what high tool is, do you? Uh, what's one of them? Uh, yeah, of course, you come from Yorkshire and you don't um, don't buy things, do you? You use a screwdriver. <laughs> I've seen them used on many occasions, certainly when I was uh, um, when I was younger, not very much now. That's uh, a call cool. used to see the boxes really hammered because of the um, uh, mis mis misuse. I would like to see her because um, it will it will hopefully show um, people Virgin Queens. I don't know if that's the one that she emerged from or not. It might be. So probably looks a little bit like it. It's the only only thing that looks anything like a um, like an emerged cell. But I suspect it's, uh, what, seven for 11 days now. I suspect um, that she emerged a couple of days ago. Um, because don't forget they are sealed for seven days. And this was 11 days ago. Although uh, Queens are very often emerge anything up to four days late as a matter of course these days. Um, this is. Got her, Richard? We've got her. We can see her. Blinking, you'd miss her though if you hadn't pointed her out. Right now, she's got all her wings. Um, I, I haven't got a problem with her, so I'm going to um, um, put put her back. Now she's actually quite sort of flighty as a, as a virgin queen. B just took rather too long to sting my arm, so I'll put it out of its misery. Right. Okay. So that's um, that's okay. Um, now you might think, if this colony uh, has been bad tempered, then why use that um, that virgin queen? Well, I brought a a queen cell with me. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I brought a coin cell with me um, that I was going to put in here if it hadn't emerged. But if that one is uh, is dud, and I then kill that one that's in the colony, uh, then Martina's got nothing. I normally smoke underneath the... Um, un underneath the supers. Oh. Right down on the wedge. And then just a little bit of a waggle. And out it comes. Um, and you all know where to get these from now. Two Brooks bees. And I've got no interest in two Brooks bees at all. But a nice little feature there with a magnet on, so I can um, I can turn it upside down, and I'm hopefully not going to lose it. <laughs> okay, so that uh, that is that colony. Um, we know the queen is uh, okay. She's got all her, all her wings. Um, now I think we can reasonably leave that for. Uh, several days. How long? Well, it takes about five days for a queen to sexually mature. Um, I think she should have emerged two, perhaps three days now. So um, by about Tuesday, Wednesday perhaps, if everything is uh, fine, the weather is good, she will probably go out and mate Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then it takes around about three days for them to come into lay after that. So if the weather is really good, in um, probably a week's time, that uh, that queen should start laying. It's about eight days earliest after they emerge. If the weather is poor, that is cool, then they um, uh, they will obviously take longer and uh, and very often do. So what I would probably do is leave it 12 or 14 days and then Martina should be able to come here and uh, certainly uh, see eggs, if not, uh, if not lava. Now, <laughs> don't worry, I'm going to, I'm going to get a, get a queen cell. <clears throat> um, I brought a queen cell with me. <laughs> Martina's uh, blocking the shed door because the wind, uh, wind keeps uh, uh, banging it shut. I brought a queen cell uh, with me from one of my colonies. It was um, uh, a, uh, a frame of 10 queen cells that I grafted. Um, only of seven of them took. This is one of them. Now, you might think that's a pretty long uh, queen cell. Uh, it is, but it's not all queen cell because there is, uh, is wax around the outside. Do you want me to get it closer, Martin? Or not? Yeah, this has uh, been in my hat, so it's just a little bit di distorted. Uh, but very often when you're raising queen cells, and you can see I've done it in the uh, JCBC uh, cup book, um, very often when you're raising queen cells, especially in a in a um, in a nectar flow you tend to get these um, uh, this uh, building do you want to you want to stop yeah okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll carry on here um, yeah you tend to get the um, uh, the bees build comb around the uh, queen cell um, it's very it, I won't say it's difficult to, uh, to stop that but the first time it happens, you think, what on earth has happened here and how am I going to get around it? Um, well, one of the ways you can do it, if you know there's a, a nectar flow on, one of the ways I've found is good is to put a frame of um, uh, uh, an empty frame next to your, your um, uh, queen cells, but with just a starter strip in it. So it, what seems to happen is that the bees prefer to build uh, the comb on the starter strip, then fill up the gap here. Also, if you can close the gap down between the um, adjacent frames, that is easier. But of course, I use castellated spacers, and that is not uh, not easy. 
Can you use that? Yes, but not as it is. So what I will um, show you what what I'll show you what to what I do. You've got to be careful with it though. And I've deliberately got a piece of uh, wood here. And in my box, I usually carry a scalpel. And I find these are very useful for uh, beekeeping. I don't know um, how much they are now, but I bought them three or four years ago. A pack of five disposable scalpels off um, eBay or, or something like that. And I think I paid about two pound for five of them, including postage, which I think is very good. Now, if you are interested, the shape of the blades vary quite a bit. And what I found is that number 21, um, and they're stamped on there, number 21 is as good as any. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the, um, cut the um, uh, comb off. And you need to be quite careful because they are um, very fragile. So you can see where the, queen cell is so cut down to the queen cell gently just don't charge straight through and, and you need a sharp knife it's no good having a blunt one uh, at all and uh, if you're accident prone i suggest very strongly that you have a big box of plasters uh, fairly close by don't try and get too close to the uh, queen cell to start with um, because I think you'll probably end up uh, damaging it. Now you can see, hold it up to the light, and you can see through it. You don't have to cut it right back to the uh, to the cell itself, because the bees bees will do that for you. Now this, of course, is probably only. Uh, of any use to those that are raising or want to raise uh, queen cells uh, artificially themselves. Right, so there we are. We're getting we're getting down to it now. Don't worry too much about the size because the bees tend to. Tend, tend to chew that back um, uh, uh, quite a bit. Now this won't be much use by the time I've finished it. It's been out of the hive uh, quite a bit. It, sh in, it should. It, it, it's due to emerge on a bit Tuesday, I think. So there you are. That's probably as good as uh, you'll get. T don't try and get uh, too close um, because once you cut into the cell, then you've got some um, um, You've got a little bit of a problem. But that, I think, is probably quite good. You can just see the tip of the cell in there. Now, the bees will chew chew that back. And you can put that in a hive. And I've seen within a couple of hours, the bees have pulled it back to what it, uh, what it normally uh, should be. So um, there it is. I don't know if it was going to be uh, any good or not. So... Just for the camera, and I don't normally do things for the camera. Let's just open it up and see what we've uh, what we've got. See what uh, see what state state it was in. Now, probably. Oh look, this really shows. Um, if you see there, you can see the cocoon. That's at the bottom of the cell. Now, there's, there's virtually nothing at the top here. And this is why bees, when they destroy a queen cell, they go in at the top because they can't chew through that tough um, uh, a cocoon uh, quite so easily. So what we've done here is actually quite, a, quite an interesting little, little exercise. Well worth me coming, this was. Come on in myself. Okay, and let me just, I uh, can't really tease that out. Oh, hang on, I've got some scissors here somewhere. If you can't see this clearly, Richard, it's a bit pointless me doing it. Is it, is it okay? No, it's clear. We can see it. Yeah. 
Well, I, I was just going to comment the got, on the, uh, the amount of royal right jelly that's in the bottom of that cell as well. Oh, I haven't noticed that yet. Obviously a very healthily uh, fed larvae. Yep. Okay. So this, if it does come out, is a really good... Um... Yeah. Okay, I've, I've, I've squashed the poor thing's head. That's probably got a couple of days to go, see? Now, to bring Richard's point... You, you okay, Richard? Can you see see that? Do you want a bit more light, Martina? Yeah, we've got I'll that. Get it away. Yeah. Um, you can see we're working on sort of minimal equipment here. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't quite got a cardboard box for the whole of the end, but we're a bit on the close side. <laughs> um, right. Richard pointed out the residual raw jelly. Look at that lot in the end there, look. So... Um, that is clearly going to be a full-size queen. And then still to have that amount of raw jelly in the end showed that that was, uh, that was developed in a, in, in a nectar flow or it was fed. And I've never, ever fed any, um, uh, uh, any queens or any colony when I've been raising queens in, in my life at all. If tell you what, if I can just lift that out... Um, I think I might be able to show you how much there is in there. Um, if I'm boring you, Richard, you better tell me. Let me just um, uh, just have a look. Look at all this lot, look, in here. All this raw jelly in there, look. Look at that. Mm. Look at that. Yeah. And that's in excess of what the uh, larvae needed to develop. That's right. And, of course, that's what... Um, what the um, uh, bees go, the worker bees go in and um, and take out. What they do with it, I don't know. Um, that 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 would be quite interested to know, but of course nobody's going to um, research that, are they? Look at all that lot. That's you know, sometimes that. why you find those queens dead head first in the cells if they're uh, hatched yeah, that, outside yeah, of the hive. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Unlike that one the other day, and that was that was absolutely genuine. That um, that worker emerging from a queen cell, absolutely uh, genuine. Uh, anyway, um, right, that usually tastes quite good, by the way. Right, I think what we do is we'll put this lot um, over somewhere else. Um, I'll have a look at this colony here next. I think Martina, will that be okay? Now, these bees are behaving pretty well, look. But they're only just ordinary, or most of them, ordinary um, uh, local bees. So let's just have a look in here. Now, this one here, um, of course, see a black cloud coming over. Um, we might have to uh, abort this, Richard, but um, uh, we'll keep going if possibly if, if we can. Uh this colony here was a, was a very small one that Martina took from from um, uh, another colony uh, over there. Now, these are different sort of bees, these are. There's quite a lot more yellowish ones there, um, right next to a dark, dark one there, yellow, yellow, yellow. And I'm afraid it's some um, problem we're getting uh, locally with um, uh, drones and people who have these um, buckfast bees um, you know, corrupting their own bees. Um, right, okay. Um, so what she did was she made up this little, um, uh, this little nucleus here. Now, um, I'll probably ought to address the uh, beginners more here. If you're making up a little um, nucleus like this <laughs> um, work out what you're trying to do with it yeah do you want that one uh, yeah work out what work out what you're trying to do with it if it's just to get a queen mated like this that's absolutely fine if you want to uh, get it through the winter you've got a very different situation now you probably in beekeeping do things um, differently at different times of the year so perhaps if this was early May or mid-May, 
And bear in mind, we're in Sussex. Um, if this was um, uh, early or mid-May, you probably uh, treat it differently than uh, as we're, we are at the moment. We just got, to, got in, in, into July. Quite what Martina's got in mind, I don't know. If it's just a case of producing queens for her other colonies, she might want to unite back again. But if um, if um, she wants to overwinter it, then it will probably need building up. I mean, it's on basically three and a half, perhaps four frames. Might not be quite uh, quite strong enough. Let's just have a look. Um, but the point I was going to make was that um, you get towards the end of the season and you end up with robbing being a possibility. So if you've got a small colony in a big box like this, try to make sure that the entrance, which is there, is adjacent to the bees, which are here. So immediately below, don't have an entrance over here and the bees over there because they are not going to be able to defend it. So let's... Uh, Let's just see what we've got. Now, there was a problem here last time because um, it was right on the point of starvation uh, to the point where I think it was four days uh, left until Martina came back. And I was I was certain that um, if we'd had poor weather in that time, uh, that colony would have, would, would, would have died out. So what I did was I put a full comb of honey from another colony in here to keep just to keep it going i didn't put it next to existing uh, comb i put a sheet of foundation or lightly drawn comb uh, in between and the reason for that was that i didn't um, think martina would want uh brooding the super combs and what the bees have done is they have I have completely cleaned um, that comb out to the point where I can just shake the bees off, and you can put that back where we can put that back where it um, uh, where it came from. So um, all this food that this colony will have, and don't forget, I haven't seen it yet, has come either out of that comb. It's probably what two pound of um, honey and nectar in there, I suppose might be three at the most, or what has come in uh, in in the meantime. That actually feels uh, as if there's something in it. And in fact, there is. There's um, quite a lot of brood. There is brood in all stages. Now, I've come... <coughs> into uh, Martina's uh, apiary. Wherever I go, I try to make sure that what I, what I do is, um, one of the first things I do is if I've got it, and the last colony there wasn't, uh, wasn't any um, uh, brood, uh, if I've got it, have a look at the unsealed brood in this stage here that is um, about to be sealed. If it fills the cell up, that is the time when you're likely to find uh, European Fowlbrood, EFB. And remember, white, bright, and curled up tight. If one of those is missing, you've got a pos you've got a problem. It could be just something minor like chalk brood, or it could be um, uh, European Fowlbrood, in which case you need to look a, a little bit a um, little bit further. Now, this um, there's eggs and larva all the way uh, round here. Oh, by the way, let, let me go back. Um, if it um, if it's in the sealed stage like this, this isn't really uh, there isn't really enough uh, there to to check. But if that was a nice patch of um, sealed uh, brood, um, if this frame was uh, uh, was uh, clear or, or or didn't show uh, any American fowl brood, I can forget either of the fowl broods for the um, for the rest of the inspection now there's absolutely no food on that collar um, on that frame at all apart from this little bit no that's brood ah right okay yep 
go back to what I said. Sorry, it, it, it looked um, looked light enough to be um, uh, nectar, but it and honey rather, but it but it isn't. Okay, if you get a patch even as big as that, uh, if it looks as good as that, then you can forget. I think American fowl brood. Uh, if the colony has got it, um, you'll pick it up next time uh, anyway. Now, there is actually not a cell of food in um, uh, in that um, comb at all, that frame at all. So, just a little bit of um, little bit of smoke. Let's see what we got uh, got here. We got a lot of uh, seal brood here. And this all looks uh, pretty good. Nothing wrong with uh, any of that that I can see. Um, so far, no food. Now, that's surprising because of all the um, lime trees that I saw around here a couple of days ago. And they were absolutely buzzing with bees. Right. I will, I will look for the queen because what I want to try and do is show you folk what... Um, what we got it again absolutely no food <laughs> now we've clearly got yeah we clearly got a, a situation here where the queen is laying absolutely flat out and of course they are um, they're turning all their food into brood and um, you know, there's, there's no no chance of the um, um, the queen uh, slowing down. Right now, they've gone through. You smell the queen. When looking um, from a, a breeding point of view, Roger. Is is this colony not one that you would go for now because of that? This queen. Um, no, very definitely not. I mean, the, 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 this queen is just um, well, they got through little colony like this has got through two pound of honey, two three pound of honey in, in in a few days. She is just laying absolutely flat out. Um, that shows me that she's she is just not suitable for this um this part of the um this part of the world uh, i don't know what I, I don't really know what 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 she is um do you want me to clip and mark that martina okay we're gonna we're gonna clip and mark the queen hope you don't mind no by all means so you can actually steer them there she is i think you see the issue on the side look at that look look at the yellow Oh, and underneath. Mm. Yeah, I think. Right, so what I'll do is just let her hold the middle finger of the other hand and with the thumb and fore, forefinger uh, hold her thorax, not her abdomen, whatever you do, not her abdomen, but the thorax. I'm, what colour would you like? Well, I've got white, I've got yellow, and I've got pink. Do you mind a pink queen? Can we have a pink queen, Richard? Uh, all mine, I think. Uh, no missing that in the hive. <laughs> well, you can't mistake it for pollen. All right, now I need my scissors. All right. So, separate the two pairs of wings, don't forget, there's a pair, and a Clip off about about half. Make sure that the queen doesn't put her leg over her back, and then you um, uh, cut it off. Now these clips uh, with the uh, with the slots in, I find uh, quite good. I, although I, I don't like gadgets, just pop her in there. Now I can't remember the date. Um, but I wrote an article for BBKA News, I think one of the Patterson's pages, where I um, I was losing queens out of out of one of these with the holes in, and I wonder what wonder what it was. I kept looking down here and there, and I couldn't see where the queen got out. 
And then one day I was, I was uh, doing a demonstration and I spotted a, a queen halfway out of the, uh, at a hole, took a photograph of it. And um, uh, the holes in the clips were um, so large that the queen, queen uh, came out. Um, tell you what we do, if you like, we'll just put that on there and see what the, uh, see what the bees do. We've had a question, Roger, from Matt. Uh, is the lack of food because of a lack of foragers, or is it no nectar about? Well, it's both the same thing, isn't it, really? Um, I said I was... Um, I've done some... Um, uh, I did some walking here um, last Friday, uh, and there were masses of lime trees, uh, certainly uh, a mile or so to the west of here, so certainly within flying distance of here. Also, we're getting blackberry coming out now quite a bit. And my bees at home, which are about 15 miles away, uh, as the fly crows, I might, might even be a shade less, they were really stacking it in this afternoon. Um, so um, I, think what it, I think what it is, see, look, the, uh, the, the bees are coming up. They, they realise where she is. Um, the... Um, uh, I think it's just the, the just the type of bees um, they are. Uh, the queen is just laying far more than um, uh, the income will will allow. Really, okay. Let me put this one back together. Now, <laughs> uh, if you wanted to bring this through the uh, winter, um, you've got to start um, thinking a bit laterally. Um, because don't forget, it takes about three weeks or within charity and distance of three weeks for an egg to become uh, an adult bee. And about six weeks for it to start foraging. So certainly in my part of the world or our part of the world, which is um, uh, in the south, uh, any egg that was laid after the uh, middle of June isn't really going to contribute to the um uh, uh, to the honey store. So what you can do then is you can use uh, combs of brood from your main honey producing colonies to booster uh, a colony uh, such as this. So there's quite a lot of bees there. Um, so what you can do is take a comb of brood um, uh, we're now so for first week in July. Take a comb of brood, sealed brood, from one of the other colonies. They won't need it. It's no good to them. Uh, shake the bees off and just put it right down in the middle here. Now, don't forget that one frame of brood, when it emerges, you get three frames of bees. So we basically got four frames of um, uh, 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 bees there. We got one comb already that's a sealed brood so if you put another uh, comb in there this colony in um let's say three weeks time back end of um uh, july is probably going to be on seven uh, seven combs uh, or even more so it it is then going to um have a much much uh, better chance of getting through the uh, through the winter if not um, I think the colony next door to it is um, uh, is quite reasonable. So probably what you could do is unite the two and perhaps give it um, uh, uh, give one or both of them a frame of um, a frame of um, uh, brood as well. So there are several things that you uh, that you can do. Another thing you can do is if you've got a colony that's um, it's quite large, but you haven't got any supers on. You could cage this queen, um, assuming the other colony is bigger. Cage this queen, swap the two positions, and just cage the queen for 24 hours. Otherwise, what often happens is um, the influx of flying bees overwhelms a smaller colony like this and will probably kill the queen. So there's... There's, there's, there's two things you can do. So I'm going to put this one back now. Uh, Roger, just uh, while you're doing that, do? uh, we've had a question. Um, fairly new hive and need them to draw out more frames. 
What kind of food should he be feeding, if any? Well, I, personally, I, I don't don't like feeding in uh, in July, um, but you know, I don't think you've got much option here because this colony here um, uh, will be dead in three days' time. Promise you, it'll be dead in three days' time. Uh, there's not even a cell of food in it. It's not Martina's uh, fault. Um, I think it's just um, the, the the sort of um, other bees that people are people are using these days. Would you uh, feed one to one or two to one for the drawing of the foundation? Um, <laughs> I only ever feed um, what we call the old thick syrup, two pound to a pint, which very neatly works out at four kilos of sugar to two and a half liters of uh, water. I can't see any point. Um, feeding any anything any different at all so that's what that's what i would do ideally i would like to take uh frames of food from other colonies now again from um um what i write and um webinars and talks and that sort of thing people should know that i like to get brood comb drawn above the queen excluder but well, this time of the year you're going to get quite a lot of um, uh, brew combs with food in above the queen excluder. Well, then just either either extract extract those, uh, or just put them as they are straight into a colony such as this. And then, of course, they've got um, food. They've got um, uh, they've got honey rather than sugar syrup, and uh, they've also got good combs built out. Um, in um in, in a super so let's um let's move on to uh another one now i'll tell you what this one here i think ought to be fa fairly similar all i'll do is move that move that roof across now i can't quite remember why we've got a super on this one with my high tool goes whoops A little bit of um, uh, smoke in the entrance. Uh, I don't know what, quite what we got here. Ah, empty super for the looks of things. Yep. I'm afraid I don't like open holes like this because if you get a strong colony, up come the bees and they end up building in the in, in the roof space. I won't tell Martina off. Looks as if we got exactly the same situation here. Now, this colony here was treated exactly the same as the other one. Let's see if they've done the done the uh, done done the same thing. Um, yeah, again, she's got the entrance. Um, immediately below the bees. So that's good. That's good thinking. It's the sort of thing that a lot of beekeepers wouldn't even think about. Um, again, we've got similar sort of bees, but I think they came from the same colony uh, originally. <laughs> Will this one need um, market, clipping and marking as well? We don't know. <laughs> Absolutely nothing in that in that frame at all. Now, I think but I'm not sure. I think that is the shallow frame that I used. Sorry? This one is clipped. This one is clipped and marked, apparently. So um, this is the comb that I put in here, and they've done exactly the same thing. Because very often, if you get two colonies side by side that are very similar, the bees, um, uh, and you do something to them, the bees very often do something uh, difficult uh, uh, different themselves and difficult too. So, uh, was it sealed off, food, Roger, or uh, unsealed? Um, I believe both of them were a mixture, and they weren't quite full comb, so that's why I say there was probably a, so there was certainly a couple of pounds of food in them anyway. Now, they are really calm bees, um, but there's absolutely no food in there at all nothing, not a jot.
Just have a look. And no eggs in there either. Oh, I've got sneaking suspicion. We're not going to have too much uh, food either. No, we aren't. All right, that was a shallow that was used um, in the brew chamber, I guess, but I don't know. Um, that that's all Martina had. Now, this is one of the problems that um, beginners get, of course. <laughs> they haven't got the stock of um, a good combs. Um, now, that tr reminds me of as, as a quaint, similar sort of queen as the other one. I, I can't remember who marked that. Was, was it me or, or you? Probably you. Yep, okay. Um, yeah. Um, where did it come from? Did it come from here? Yeah, it came from there. <laughs> okay. Um, now, from a beginner's point of view... <laughs> Um, I don't think that I would, uh, unless you're in a heather district, I don't think I would um, put foundation on from uh, from now onwards um, because this this foundation here, um, what will probably happen is the bees won't um, uh, won't do anything with it. Um, they might climb all over it. Next year that will be stale and they won't probably won't build very good uh, combs on it. So. Uh, I, know, I know it's difficult for uh, beginners, but um, I wouldn't um, uh, I wouldn't put foundation on a, on a colony, certainly in my area, after the beginning of July. Right. Here we are. And we've got another one. Oh, right. Okay. So there's a, there's a lot of brood there. And the person that was asking the question, this, of course, is what's happened. Um, the bees have simply turned all their food into brood. There's not a jot here. One thing that would worry me just a little bit, you've got a couple of drones in worker cells there. And if you read what I've written on Cushman's website, Dave Cushman's website, um, that is usually a sign to me that the queen is in the early stages of failure. A couple, probably not worth worrying about. But certainly, if you get uh, get many more than that, then I, I would I would be um, worried. I know the queen's not on there, so I'm going to give that a little bit of a shake. Get um, get rid of the bees just to let you see what's um, what's going on. Um, there's a um, yeah, you've got another one there. Um, you've got a couple of interesting things uh, here, and I often get asked why is some comb darker than others. Well, it can be because um, it's older comb, and don't forget, every time there's a uh, there's a generation goes uh, goes through a cell, it leaves a cocoon behind. The other thing is actually what you've got here. Um, you've got it lighter out here and darker there, and that's purely, I think, that this is older than that. So let's just have a little bit of a look and see. This is all part of observation, and observation is a great, um, great part of beekeeping. So I'm going to uh, have a dig into Martina's comb. I, I know she won't mind because she's ever so kind. She's not like me at all. So let's pick on one of the dark cells here. All right. Fairly close to emerging. Got that, Richard? Yeah, got that. That cell there. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, uh, it's dark because it's fairly close to emerging. But if we get out here, or uncap, let's say that one. Look, it's probably four or five days younger. It might even be a little bit... Um, uh, yeah, more than that. More than that. Let's yep. just have a look. Yeah, it's that uh, that that one's just turned. Um, so that one is probably going to be eight days younger than that one. Um, yeah, Martina just pointed um, uh, something out, which in fact is all brood, all brood. That one there, and 
Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the main reason for that is the runs of greater wax moth, although there is evidence now that um, uh, some colonies are beginning to uh, detect varroa in the cell and will are, are uncapping. Now, have a look at the uh, cells. If you've got a hole in it, have a look at the hole. If it's... Um, sort of fairly regular in shape and central, the chances are, even if it's, it doesn't really matter if it's um, honey or brood, it's everything is going to be okay with it. If it's jagged and off-center, there's usually a problem, such as, I think, Martina, that's the wire that goes down. Yes, you can see the wire underneath. Yeah, you can see the wire that goes down underneath. So there's one here that uh, is off-center, and it's fairly jagged. And I suspect, but I don't know, I suspect that's chalk brood. So let's just open it up and see what we got. I think it's the early stage of the chalk brood. But I can't really see it too well myself. It might, might be sack brood. Okay. Let's just have a look at the other side, see if there's anything there we can see. No. Not much. Right. Um, <clears throat> I know you won't be able to see it here, but because this colony is very short of food, as was the last one, um, the larva, there's virtually no food, food in, in the cells, so nutrition is poor. Once you start getting poor nutrition of any living organism, it just opens it up for all sorts of problems, such as uh, disease. So what can we do with this? If, in all honesty, if it was me, and if Martina wanted the colonies, I think I would feed these. I don't like feeding them, but what you need to do is feed little and often so that it's... Um, uh, it's it, it's a sort of regular flow. If you feed too much, what the bees will probably do is uh, fill up all the cells so the queen can't lay. And, uh, you know, you just need to feed enough so that there's a little bit um, formed to store, a little bit so they can build out the foundation, and a little bit so they can um, uh, feed the brood. So I'm going to close that up now. Close that colony up. We've had a, a couple of questions come through, Roger. Yep, carry on. Uh, so the first question, uh, going back to uh, apologies if I sound like Barry White. I've, uh, I'm not very well at the moment. Um, we've had a question around um, the queens and virgin queens. Could Roger please tell us how long uh, after become, uh, becoming queenless uh, did a virgin queen emerge? Um, he wants to know, can it be much less than 16 days? Um, yeah. Um, I've got well, some context. Uh, it's, uh, it, it does actually vary quite a bit. Um, some colonies will um, start producing queen cells, uh, visible signs, uh, within, well, certainly within 12 hours. Others... Um, uh, three days or so, and they still haven't started. Um, now, in my experience, now I've written about this somewhere, but I can't remember where. Uh, in my experience, um, bees, if they're given the choice, will always use um, uh, larva of, of the right age, so the youngish larva. So um, let's say they take a five-day-old uh, larval from the uh, line of the egg. So if they set, um, set off building the queen cell straight away, um, it's about 10 or 11 days before you get your emerged, uh, emerged queen. About 10 or 11 days. Yeah, the, uh, the questioner was saying, because 13 days after introducing a frame of eggs to a queenless hive, 
uh, he changed the entrance uh, by 180 degrees and wondered whether or not that had messed up the Queen mating. Right. <clears throat> OK, go back to what I said earlier. It takes about five days for them to sexually mature after um, they emerge. So within those five days, you're usually OK. Uh, I wouldn't uh, do anything let's say after about three or four days after you've known they've emerged until they have, uh, they started laying. It's exactly the same as, as, as moving a colony. Um, and certainly with, uh, with nukes, queen mating nukes, I do move them around quite a bit, but not if they've got a virgin queen in. So it's exactly, it's exactly the same thing, Richard. Yeah. Uh, Matt's keen of eye in that last, um, colony uh, where you said that there was a couple of cells where there was drones he said there was a queen cup in the middle of the frame was it charged could it be supersedure we'll have a look good point well, well, I know it's only a young queen wasn't that one was sorry it. Martin was it that one there we go I think it was that one. Queen's on this. I won't shake it. Not that it'll make any difference anyway. Ah, here we are. Yeah, it was, it was actually a good point. So we'll check it. Oh, let's see. You, you, you tell me if there is one. Uh, just couldn't quite see right into the back. No, no, there isn't. Um, now, there's that, there's that, there's that white mark in the in in the base, um, which very I don't know why they put put it in there. I wonder if it's fresh wax, but it very often looks like a a um a queen cell when it um an egg rather when it is. I'll tell you what we do. We'll um we shake the bees off. I know, I know the queen's in the other on the other frame. Uh, let's get the um, scalpel. Sorry, it takes so much time, but if people are learning, that's that, that's what it's that's what it's all about. Mm. No, I don't think there's anything in there, Richard. But yeah. it, 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 it 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 was good thinking, because. Um, uh, a lot of people, even even today, when we've had 20 years of queen problems, just do not understand that young queens uh, can be superseded. But it's good uh, thing. Happy, yeah. Sorry. Happy to do it. Uh, another quick question: Can you still place fertilized eggs from um, one colony into a queenless colony that has laying workers? Will they build queen cells, or will the worker bee pheromone rule? I've found in general the um, the worker worker bees rule. I think your best bet is to uh, put a frame of brood in there every week for about three weeks, and and uh, uh, and then try and do something. It tends to knock them off. Yeah. Right. I don't know how long you've got um, left, Richard, um, but I've got this queen here that has um, uh, that has got deformed wings. Oh uh, yeah. Do you, want no, me to go on, do you want me to go on to that now? We've done a we've done an hour and a uh, a bit. Yeah, I, I think that that would be useful for for anybody who's uh, okay thinking about what you said about trying to check queens before they go out to mate. Yeah, go on to Cushman's website and see um uh, uh queen problems, and um I've actually got it on there because it's uh, it's been happening an awful lot, and it was interesting that it. Uh, that I saw one today. Now, what I've got is this is the queen cell that it came out of. Can you see that, um, Richard? Oh, sorry. Let me. Uh, I was just trying to find Cushman's website. Uh, two jobs at once. Go on, Martina. Yeah, we can see that queen cell. See that? Okay. And you. you 
you you can see that it's um that it's emerged because of the uh, ring around the end. If it hadn't emerged, it will be the bees would have chewed it into the side here, which I showed you earlier why they do that or why we think they do it. Yep. Right. Now, what I'm going to do here is probably make an idiot of myself because um, I know the queen can't fly. The workers work as well. They are, look, there she is. She's trying to fly, look. Yeah. Look at that. Do you, do you, do you see one wing? Is, is okay and the other one's crumpled up? Not quite. I can't see because I've got a camera in my eye at the moment. <laughs> I said a camera, not a camel. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see that, yeah. Wait just a minute. Let me... Ah, there, there he is. Look. That is the wing one side, and that's all there is the other side. Yeah, got that. <laughs> right. Now, that queen clearly cannot fly. Yeah. Have you, have, have you got it? Um, I'll tell you what. Hello, Chris. Don't read anything into this. You can have your wife back when we finished. <laughs> uh, I'm, ju I'm just going to take a photograph of this, which is a... Right. Look, there's two, two worker bees on there, look. Okay. Can you... Do you need that again, Richard? Uh, if we could just try one more time, yeah, just to be clear. Well, she's only got one wing, so it's not easy to hang on to yeah. her, especially when she's... Yeah. Yeah, you can see that uh, that wing in comparison. Yeah, yeah. Now it's easy yeah. enough for people to think, "Oh yeah, she's okay. She's emerged." Um, when in fact she 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 um, uh, well, instrumental insemination is about the only way you could you, you could do that. Right, so um, we got other things that we can uh, we can do here. Um, we'll take a few questions if you like. Uh, yeah, just a bit of clarification for one uh, viewer. Uh, she thought, uh, or he thought, sorry, I'm not quite sure who it is, uh, that you'd said that we only clip one of the four wings. Uh, <laughs> no, what, what, what one side? Yeah, no, what what one side? Um, yeah, because of course, um, don't forget. Queen, queen, well, bees have got four wings, and it's just clipping about about half one one side, half to a third one side. Yeah. Uh, I have seen uh, queens be clipped, and I thought they would be okay, um, but they have actually managed to fly and take a swarm with them. Um. Uh, regarding not keeping foundation on the hive from the beginning of July in the southeast. What if we feed uh, the colony? <laughs> yeah, if we feed the colony, that's okay. Um, uh, perhaps I was thinking more of super foundation than, uh, than anything. But don't forget, I'm here. I'm trying to think of what's going on in the colony. I'm trying to think of the next next thing I can I can show people and also um, uh, what I can make interest in. So, yeah, sorry if, it was, if that wasn't clear. Yeah. Uh... And then uh, I've saved this one till last because uh, Mary doesn't know what she's got coming. Uh, she says, I'm new to beekeeping. Uh, and she says, uh, is there a problem with book fast bees? Should I be looking for something different? 
Uh, how long has she got? <laughs> um, there's, there's no problem with Buckfast bees if you like them. Um, but on a personal um, uh, note, and bearing in mind, I have never, ever used them myself, or certainly not bought them. But I've certainly seen them in a lot of uh, a lot of places. I've uh, spoken to a lot of experienced beekeepers, and there are um, seem to be more problems with buckfast than uh, than anything else. Um, but it is quite a long um, a, a long story. Of course, the main one is that uh, people seem to think that they're buying bees that uh, a, dear, a dear old monk. Um, got his hands on uh, that I think is uh, a long way from the truth and I'll tell you why because the buckfast bees that were around when I started keeping bees in the 1960s are very very different than the buckfast bees that um, uh, that I see these days I get around the country as you know uh, an awful lot or pre-covid I did uh, in fact I started uh, started again now but um, uh, anyway um, people tell me that uh, oh, come and see my my lo lovely buckfast, and they're they're, they're all very different, <clears throat> um, different kinds of um, different colours of bees in the same hive, tending to suggest that some of them are quite frankly little more than mongrels. Now I've got to be careful what I say because I'm fairly certain there are some good. Um, a good buckfast breeders around, um, genuine people. Um, but um, I think there's a lot of buckfast that are sold that have got absolutely nothing to do with buckfast abbey at all. And, um, uh, you know, they, they, they're just playing on the name. In fact, somebody sent me an advertisement, um, well, not an advertisement, a, a website, linked to a website uh, only yesterday, uh, showed a picture of, uh, of of Brother Adam, and I'm pretty certain those bees had absolutely nothing to do with uh, uh, Brother Adam. Now, what what are they genetically? They vary considerably. You'll get a Greek buckfast that is different than a Danish buckfast, which is different than a German buckfast, which is different than a a, a Canadian or an American um, a, a buckfast. They are, they are all almost a bit of a mishmash, um, but they all seem to be based on um, uh, what we call exotics, perhaps mainly Italians or, um, or, or Carniolans. And one of the problems you get with them, and what seems to always be an issue, is God, I had Buckfast and uh, God, the next generation, they were really bad tempered. There is a massive a temper issue with some of them. I'm not saying all of them, but certainly um, some. And if you get experienced beekeepers who have tried them and they end up with a with an aggression problem, then you can you can say that it's it's pretty um uh, uh pretty widespread. Um, so what you've got to do is to keep buying queens. And, of course, uh, well, in fact, I was at Buckfast Abbey. I only ever went there twice. And um, uh, both both times were over 40 years ago. Uh, and um, uh, even, so, well, the question was asked of Brother Adam, and even he said, well, buy another one. Well, that's fine if you're selling them, but it is unsustainable. It's unsustainable. But there's an awful lot, uh, awful lot more to it than than um, uh, the, than just that. They uh, always glad you seem asked to be Mary? very. Pardon? Isn't Mary glad she asked? <laughs> no, um, the... if you if you if you want bark fast, then then have bark fast. Um, but uh, you you won't you won't you won't keep them. You've got to keep buying queens, and um, you've got to keep feeding them. Uh, they seem to be just sitting there waiting for food, as far as uh, far as um, I can tell from what people tell me. Yeah, I've so posted it to the uh, Dave Cushman website where you've uh, you've written about book fast. Um, oh, yeah. Last couple of questions. Uh, I was literally just being given a mated queen, and I'm about to collect it. Uh, any quick advice how to make up a nuke for her? 
specifically uh, would a two frame nuke with adhering bees and brooding all stages uh, from do different colonies work? Uh, yes, it can do. Um, uh, all these things are, di are difficult. Firstly, I don't know anything about the questioner. Secondly, I don't know uh, anything about the uh, about the situation. But if it was uh, me and you're trying to take, if it's a beginner, I try to avoid taking bees from two colonies. Um, because certainly at the moment, depending on where you are, um, where there isn't a great nectar flow uh, on, um, bees get a bit touchy and they are more likely uh, to fight than perhaps they normally would. But if you saw one of my earlier um, uh, streams, um, do what I did, which was put the two put the two together and then just bang the nuke box down on the ground a couple of, well, half a dozen times uh, quite heavily. So they all, all the bees fall off and they, uh, they hit the bottom of the box. I can't ever remember having a problem uh, with that. But if you are a beginner and you just do it gently, um, you know, you, you, you might have a, a, a problem. Just give them a jolly good thump on the ground. Um, that um, uh, that usually works. <laughs> um, right. Uh, the person has, yeah, I don't really know what the state of the other colony is like. Um, what it will concern me, especially if it was a beginner or somebody fairly inexperienced, let's put it that way, uh, if they make up a nucleus in their own apiary and the bees, uh, most of the flying bees go home, then there may not be enough bees to cover the brood that's there. So I think probably what I'll do is try and find somebody two or three miles away, flying distance, be well, uh, 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 two or three t uh, miles distant, take the nucleus there, and then introduce the queen. Uh, if they've been given the queen, um, it's probably in these days, uh, probably in one of these what they call puzzle cages. I would put that down between the uh, between the combs. Don't push it down so that you cover up these holes, but put it down between the combs, and I would leave it for forty eight hours, and then release uh, and then release her. And that would probably give you the best chance of um, uh, of success. But please don't think, despite hearing occasionally that uh, somebody's got a hundred percent success rate at um, introducing queens, please don't think that that's likely to be uh, common. Because in my experience, queen introduction has become more difficult than it uh, than it used to. So um, that's what I would suggest. If it's a more experienced beekeeper, uh, then I think probably what I'll do is take the, um, make up the nuke, get some young bees into it one way or another. And I don't just mean shaking extra bees in because you need to make sure that the bees that you're shaking in are young bees. And you can only do that by looking at them. Just have a look at the frame. If there are plenty of young bees on there, you shake them in absolutely fine. And I think probably what I do is uh, leave them there for um, a day or best part of a day. Let the flying bees go home. You've then got young bees left behind and they will be, um, uh, uh, be much happier at accepting a queen than the older bees uh, will. Um, the time of year makes a difference. Um, it's probably as difficult um, early July, or certainly in the, in the south of England, um, as any other time during the year. Earlier, you're usually okay, because there tends to be quite a lot of nectar uh, around, and you can do almost anything with bees during a nectar flow. Later in the season, I find you're usually okay. Um, July can be 
can be quite difficult. So perhaps, all right, and make up a colony. Yeah, I'm modifying my view now. Make up a colony with a little bit of brood and shake in three or four frames of, uh, of bees. Leave it for, um, uh, for a reasonable flying day. Let the old bees go home. You haven't got much brood in there um, to um, uh, to be neglected because you've lost lost uh, lost bees, but you've got enough to hold the hold the colony, um, and then introduce the uh, queen after that. So that's what thinking thinking on the hoof is about, as far as beekeeping is concerned. So you uh, uh, you had a a really good uh, technique for. Uh obtaining young bees in your live at the hive uh, two frame nuke uh one where you put a, a frame of open brood above a queen excluder so it might be uh, useful for people to uh, go and have a little look at that as well uh yeah i can't remember which one that was original i think it was a second second one. Oh, wait, wait, wait mm. a minute it was the second one i think wasn't it yeah i think it was the two frame nuke one <laughs> yeah um, yeah um yeah. And in fact, we've got a frame frame covered. Yeah, that 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 would be another way of doing it. Make up your nuke with uh, with them. Sorry, but you know, there's, there's so many different ways. Yeah, of there, there is doing yeah. things. Uh, Clive certainly... wants to know what kind of queens do you recommend? What kind of queens? Yeah. Oh uh, well, it depends where you are, really. Um, if you're in an area where they've got. Um, uh, native bees, um, Apis mellifera, mellifera, let's say Ireland, um, perhaps um, the uh, harsher areas of Wales, uh, Scotland or England, um, where that's about all they've got. Some of the islands, uh, the um, uh, the Northern Islands, um, uh, or the Isle of Man, um, just use what other local local people are using. Please, 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 on their behalf, don't just bring um queens in from outside because uh you will um uh you will cause problems with uh, with local mating if you've got an area where bees are really just mon heavily mongrelized and i'm afraid west sussex is one uh, such area then just use what other people use locally um i wouldn't um i would get get, get your queens from a local supplier that have been bred locally not um uh not ones that have come in from elsewhere because they they've evolved to suit other climates and um people can argue as much as they like um but they in my opinion they just don't suit the uh suit the area that people bring them into which um uh which is something we struggle to get uh, the message across to uh, 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 to beekeepers. Um, in general, it needs to be uh, a queen that was raised from a colony that has done well in either your locality or a similar locality for a number of uh, years, or perhaps uh, I'll change that, a number of generations rather than a number of years. So um i i haven't bought queens for about 50 54 years now uh i haven't needed to simply because i've used what was um what was locally or what i've brought in from other areas that are um are fairly similar oh and if you've got a um a, a lake district um, where you need bees that build up later in the season than um, uh, than other areas, there's no point bringing queens in from areas that um, that build up early, because all you're going to end up with is um, is early swarming, and of course uh, vice versa. Uh, there's no good getting bees from uh, an area where they've got a late season uh, if you've got an early season, because you need bees that build up. Uh, build up early so there's lots of lots of things to it so that's why i would say um get bees from a similar locality but having said that uh sometimes i'll get around the country and i'll find it um uh 
conditions are different, even 10, 15, 20 miles away. Um, and people need uh, different uh, types of bees. A beekeeper I know in, in North Wales, and his own area is very, very poor. Right way, it, 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 it is marginal. It's right on the point of where the bees, I think, would uh, live there naturally anyway, because um, even then his own apiary, you can't keep any more than about half a dozen colonies. There just isn't a forage for them. But if he takes those very same bees 15 or 20 miles away, they do really well, as good as anything else. So it, it's not just a simple thing like, oh, uh, uh, buying a queen or acquiring a queen or, or, or whatever. And, you know, the best one is really probably the best one uh, is the one that's been raised in your area from stock that um, that survived there for some, some time. I've uh, signposted people to your uh, webinar on how you improved your own bees. Uh, that gives some uh, really useful practical tips. Uh, Roger, as always, we are indebted to you for your expertise and knowledge and wanting to share that free of charge. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, not sure we've got another one booked in just yet, but we will uh, we'll let people know when the next one will be. Well, yeah, I think it's rather timely because I think there's a big black cloud um, about, to, uh, about to open itself on us. <laughs> so we've got to clear up. Anyway, yeah, thanks very much. I hope it's been interesting. Um, it's rather difficult. Um, I live uh, 15, no, 17 or 18 miles away by car from Martina's. And the, on the way here, I was thinking, well, if it rains, what should we do? If it doesn't rain, what should we do? Um, but I think we've, well, we've done over an hour and a half now, haven't we? We certainly have, yeah. Hey, whether it's yeah. been listen, worth listening to or not, I've absolutely no idea. But it uh, depends how many people are still listening, I suppose. Uh, 75 <laughs> anyway. still logged on, so, uh, so oh, you're not crazy. doing so bad. Yeah, well, it can't be any foot. Can't be any football on tonight. Then. <laughs> um, Excellent. Right. Thanks, okay. Roger. Well, thanks very much, Richard uh, and Nick and Martina, and thanks very much, everybody, for listening. Thank you all. <laughs>